Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to understand the balancing of several masses rotating in the same plane, but with the help of graphical method. In the previous video, I already explained how to balance the several masses with the help of analytical method. I recommend you initially see that videos first. So on the right side of the screen, you can see this. This is the figure. A shaft is rotating with some angular velocity and four masses are attached to the shaft. The masses of the shaft may be m1, m2, m3, m4 and the angles with respect to the axis of the shaft are also given when you are going to solve the question. So let's find out the steps. What are the steps you have to follow in the graphical method? And the steps are, the first step is you have to make the space diagram of it. So this is the space diagram for this figure. What I made here is I make the side view from this direction. I will see this shaft and make the. So let us say that this is M1, this is M2, M3 and M4. And you have to make the angles with the axis of rotation. And this is a horizontal line for this space diagram. And this is a theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 in the same way, theta 4 with mass 4 with horizontal line. When these masses will rotate with respect to the axis of rotation of the shaft, it will exhibit centrifugal force towards the outside. This is a F4, outside of this one F3 and this is F2 and this is F1. So this is a space diagram and you have to make this space diagram with the help of geometry tools. In the next step, you have to find out the centrifugal forces. So for these one centrifugal forces is F1, M1, R1 in the same way F2, M2, R2, F3, M3, R3 and F4, M4, R4. So these are the centrifugal forces. I just neglect the angular velocity over here because angular velocity is common to all the masses. What could be the angular velocity of M1? That could be the angular velocity of M4. So this is the reason I do not write here omega scale. So these are the centrifugal forces. In the next step, you have to make the vector diagram of the forces. After finding out the centrifugal forces and the direction of that particular centrifugal force is given according to the space diagram. So for vector diagram, just start from here. So I make a force F1. This is a F1 force. And I will take any point A and B. So cent the force magnitude is given by F M1 and R1 and I know the direction of my force because from the space diagram you can see this, this line is exactly parallel to this line. So with the help of roller scale, you can make a parallel line over here. You can also make this line with the help of theta 1, this line with the help of protector. In the same way, next is B to C. So I am taking F2 force which is M2. R2 and this is again parallel to my this F2 force and you can also take a angle over here theta 2 in the same way F3 so I take a theta 3 and this magnitude is whatever F3 here in the same way F4 so this is F4 and this complete angle is theta okay so this complete is a vector diagram now, as per polygon law of forces, you know that whatever the closing side means this is the last point, E is the last point and A is the initial point. You have to join this points like this and this become the resultant R for this complete figure or vector diagram of the forces. And the direction of this particular resultant is always upside because we know that we will move toward this side. So the resultant should be in this direction. Now, next step is you have to find out the balancing force. So, what is the balancing force? Balancing force is whatever the resultant force, but in opposite direction, the magnitude of the balancing force is equal to resultant force, but in opposite direction means you have to take in this direction. This is Fc and the magnitude, whatever the resultant magnitude here we have. So, you have to find out the resultant magnitude with the help of scale. You have to measure this AE line. What is the measurement of this AE line? You have to measure it. And now in the space diagram, you can see that 
I make the resultant over here. This is the resultant. The magnitude of the resultant I'm taking in the space diagram and balancing force is just exactly opposite to it. Opposite to it. This is FC, my actually balancing force and magnitude is same to the resultant but in opposite direction. So direction are opposite. Simply means says that you have to put some mass over here. Let us pose M. You have to put M mass over in this direction to balance this complete system or you can say that this is a balancing mass and you can calculate this balancing mass by this simple formula. So centrifugal force FC which is the resultant in magnitude and opposite to that particular resultant M you have to find out and radii of rotation is mostly given in the numerical mass would be a FC by R. So this is the graphical method when you have a several masses rotating in the same plane. Now we will understand this graphical method with the help of a numerical. Now this is the question in which four masses M1 to M4 are given. The corresponding radii of rotation are also given for all the masses and angle between the successive masses are also given. You have to find out the position and magnitude of the balancing mass required if its radius of rotation is 0.2. So first of all you have to make the space diagram of it. So this is the space diagram. These are the masses. And corresponding radii of rotation are Now we know that the angle between the successive masses are given like between M1 and M2 is 45. In the same way between M2 and M3 is 75 and between M3 and M4 is 135. These are the angles between the successive mass. You have to find out the angles with respect to this horizontal line. This horizontal line represents the radius of rotation of the first mass. So you have to calculate angles from this reference line talk about the theta one means angle of the mass m1 with respect to this line that is zero this horizontal line and m2 that is theta 2 that is 45 and angle between this horizontal line and this m3 is theta 3 and you know that between m1 and m2 that is 45 and m2 and m3 it is 75 so total of that is 120 and between this horizontal line and mass m4 theta 4 is 120 plus 135 that is 255 now this complete is a space diagram now you have to calculate the centrifugal forces first so for F1 that is M1 R1 you have to find out the magnitude of these forces in the same way F2 is M2 and R2 in the same way F3 and F4. I neglect the angular velocities because angular velocity is constant. So now putting the values of all the variables. So these are the magnitude of the centrifugal forces of all the masses towards outside of the space diagram. So if I make the directions of these forces in the space diagram, it will be like this. Now these are the direction of the all the forces according to the masses angles. Now after finding out the magnitude of the forces, you have to make the vector diagram of the forces. But to draw the vector diagram, you need to take the scale factor because you see that all magnitudes are in meters. It is not possible to make the line in meters on A4 size pages. You have to take the scale factor. So I will take scale factor as 40 meter is equal to 4 centimeter or you can say that 10 meter is equal to 1 cm means whenever I make a line of 1 cm and actually it represents the 10 meters so this becomes 4 cm so this becomes 4.5 cm it becomes 6 cm and it becomes 7.8 cm so you have to take these measurements to draw the vector diagram for the vector diagram you have to take the scale now this scale must be parallel to this force f1 and take your scale to this side and draw a line of 4 cm here because first force F1 magnitude is 4 cm. In the same way you have to take 
parallel to F2 and take over here and make a line of 4.5 centimeter. In the same way, take a scale again and make parallel to F3 and come over here and make a line of 6 centimeter. In the same way, for the last mass that is M4 and F4 direction is here, take scale and parallel to it and make a line which is 7.8 centimeter like this. Okay, so this is my vector diagram. You can also give the namings to it. Now to find out the resultant, you have to join initial point that is A and last point E like this. So take a scale and take a line over here and whatever the measurement of this line. So that could be the resultant. So this is resultant and resultant as per this measurement around 2.5. 3 centimeter. So this is my resultant of this particular vector diagram of the forces. As per the graphical method, whatever the resultant is, that is your centrifugal force of the balancing Fc. But it is a 2.3 centimeter. You have to convert it into meters. It becomes 23 meters or you can say that 23 kg meter. So this is the magnitude of the balancing force. Now you have to find out the magnitude of the balancing mass. So for that we have a formula Fc is equal to m into r where m is the balancing mass, r is the radius rotation of the balancing mass. So Fc is given 23. You have to find out m and r is 0 0.2 according to the constant. So by calculating your m would be a 115 kilograms. So this is a balancing mass. Now after finding out the magnitude of the balancing mass, you have to put your balancing mass in the space diagram. And for that, you have to take this resultant parallel line and make a line over here. You can see this. This is exactly parallel line to this one, which is my resultant. But this is a resultant. But you have to make the balancing force over here which is exactly opposite to your resultant like this. So you can see this. This is my balancing force and the angle you have to take from the horizontal line. So from the horizontal line, you have to measure this angle and by measurement of this angle, this angle would be a around 201 degree. So this is the way to find out the position and magnitude of the balancing mass means you have to put the balancing mass over here and this mass would be a 115 kg and the position of this particular balancing mass from the horizontal line is theta is equal to 201 degree. So this is the solution of this numerical. I hope you understand this numerical and this graphical method to find out the several masses rotating in the same plane. If you have any query, you can comment in the comment section. Thank you everyone.